Thank you. Um, good evening. If I can just sort of start with a question. If you'd raise your hand if at some point in your life you have been the proud owner of a night light. Put your hands in the air. Okay, so I don't think that I would have gotten through childhood without my nightlight, and it's just the 300 of us in the room, so if we can just kind of keep this between us. Even now as an adult, I'm still kind of a, a big fan. And I'm not telling you this to instill your confidence in my bravery, but I'm telling you this because I think that um, even as adults, and especially as educators, I think there's a very specific nightlight that we still need, and I'm gonna call it the teacher nightlight. So stick with me on that point, I'll unpack that metaphor in a bit. But if I can just ask you to travel back in time and think about when you were a child, why it was so significant to own one. Maybe it's because it was a guide if you woke up in the middle of the night, it was there to help kind of provide, all right, I'm taking that next step in the dark, where's that next step going to be? For me, maybe the most significant reason I loved having a nightlight is because when I was just a little bit too young, I accidentally saw a few scenes from the classic horror film, Poltergeist. So those of you who are familiar with it can imagine exactly how in love with my nightlight I was that year and exactly how attached I've been to my therapist uh, this year. The nightlight is also fantastic because it's that glow that is a signifier that says, it's time for me to kind of set the waking hours away and get ready for my dreams. But there's this thing that happens between childhood and becoming an adult. We tell ourselves, unplug those nightlights, throw them out. We're not afraid anymore, right? The dark is just fine. Those silly anxieties, those don't happen to us, do they? I'd ask you tonight to be thinking about this question. At your school, in your context, what's your teacher nightlight? The problem with that question is it suggests one thing. Our job is very scary, and working in schools is daunting. And sometimes we don't want to admit just that. And for those who would argue that that's inaccurate, I would tell them, go ask a teacher friend. How often do you have teacher nightmares? Ridiculous scary, terrifying. I've had them my entire career, and I don't think that they're going away anytime soon. They are those things that come from our deepest and darkest insecurities. They're the questions that we mull over at three in the morning because it's really hard to be vulnerable and talk about them with our colleagues. It's questions like, do I bore my students? Do my colleagues secretly hate working with me? I don't know, there's a few of my colleagues in the audience, so I'm worried about the laughter on that one. Um, and the third question is, did I leave the bathroom with my dress tucked into my underwear? Again. I don't think that we're a bunch of scaredy cats. I think rather that the stakes are very high and we understand that very much. We want our work to matter. I've worked with some phenomenal educators and I would describe them as being in the inspiration business. And I'd be willing to bet that those of you in the audience tonight agree with me when I say the world is only going to become a better place if schools figure out how to get it right. That's a tremendous amount of pressure. What's been my teacher nightlight? I feel very lucky, and I'm sure some of you do as well. We've had a lot of these moments that are maybe less nightlight and more lighthouse. We return to them again and again in turbulent times. They are those moments that have been momentous for us, that we will remember for our entire careers and probably beyond. But here's the thing. I don't think that the people who create those moments for us always are able to recognize how important they are. To illustrate this, I actually have a colleague in the audience tonight. A few weeks ago, she, out of the kindness of her heart, during a very busy day, made room to buy me a coffee, have a lovely conversation, and say some really kind things. And I know that maybe weeks, months, or even years from now, when I'm having a particularly trying day, I'm going to return to that conversation. For her, maybe she's already forgotten that it happens. And that's why I really want to remind you to think about the power that we have to help one another navigate those next steps and be guides. The awesome opportunity that we have to bring comfort 
to those on our staff, and also to inspire each other to maybe look at transitioning into new roles or to plant that seed of inspiration. If learning, too, is all about recognizing that change is coming and always has been coming in education, it's so important for us to remember the number one obstacle to change is fear. So what do we do about that? Conference theme, illuminate the next decade. I would suggest it's also about illuminating this week, the one after that, and the one after that. How do we do that? We do that with the small lights. We take those tiny bursts, those flickers, we string them all together, and we build a constellation of confidence. That's what's going to guide us through the dark. Doctors have this great creed that they say really defines their profession, do no harm. Please take learning too as your opportunity to think about the teaching guiding statement. I propose we bring more light. Thank you.